Hi, my name is Derek. I'm the greenhouse manager here at Tedler Garden Center, but I'm also the native plant enthusiast. And this week happens to be National Pollinator Week, so we're going to talk about some native plants that we have. A lot of the reasons why we plant native plants are because they're easy to take care of, they bloom in the middle of the summer season, and they have lots of color, and just they're super drought tolerant. So they're just something that you want to have in your garden. One of the reasons why I really personally like them is because a lot of our native pollinators, whether it be monarch, which a lot of people are into, or bees, native bees, they really like those plants too. And I feel like native plants are a really great way to open your yard or garden and to let nature just come in naturally on its own. So there's a lot of native plants to choose from, so I'm actually gonna narrow down the list a little bit and just talk about a few. But keep in mind, there's a lot more. So we have, I'm gonna start with the gray head coneflower which has, it's actually not really a cone flower at all, actually. It happens to be a plant in a different family, but they have beautiful yellow flowers in early July, and they get about four to five feet tall, so about chest high on me. They're really great. Mine's about getting ready to burst into bloom in the next few weeks. Just a really great plant, and bees are especially in love with that plant, I would say. So another one, and I think this one's really cool because it's purple poppy mallow. It's one of the only natives that you can get with a fuchsia or pink colored bloom. They like a little bit of a wetter area, but they don't get too tall. They get about three feet tall by about three feet wide. So just a nice mounding perennial there. When do they back. When do they bloom? They, those bloom in June. Mine's actually just starting to bloom now and you can really tell where it's at because that flower is so noticeable with the color that it is. We have one with the flowers here. You can see the little the bee sign saying that it's a bee favorite plant. This is Liatris, so it's coming into bloom right now. Some bloom earlier, some bloom later with those beautiful purple blooms. Butterflies like it, but you'll also occasionally see hummingbirds on there too. Um, very nice plant. Speaking of butterflies, we have two kinds of milkweed to show. I have common milkweed right here, which gets a pink flower in the next couple weeks. Everybody knows what the milk food flower looks like. It's very uh, fragrant as well. And the one we have next to that, this one I have a picture to show. This is the rose milkweed or swamp milkweed. Really tolerant of wet soils. Common milkweed gets about three feet tall. The swamp milkweed gets about four. So both about that chest height or a little more than. Really great plant if you really want to help the monarchs. That's the plant you really need to get because Everybody plants plants for the adults to feed on, but they're not really thinking about the larvae or what plants those monarchs can raise their babies on. Those are the ones to get. So if you really want to help them, get those plants. Host plants are good plants to have in the garden. So we have a grass to show as well. One of my favorite grasses. This one is Little Blue Stem. This happens to be a variety called Standing Ovation. It gets red fall color, orangish fall color with a nice feathery looking seed head on there. It's a really great plant for winter interest as well. It's one of my favorites. It gets about three to four feet tall. Is it more of an upright grass or more of an arching grass? It's an upright grass, I would say very upright. Um, it's a really great grass to have. Will it spread a lot in your garden? No, it's not. Like, so I'm glad you asked that. A lot of people wonder, do I going to plant that and it's going to spread everywhere? This is a clump type grass, so it's going to stay put. It's okay. not going to spread everywhere. I want to show another grass while we're at it too. This one's called Shenandoah Red Switchgrass. And it doesn't look like a lot right now, but if you maybe get really close, you can see a little bit of a flower coming out. But when those come all the way out, they really look, they look very interesting. You kind of see a little bit of that in the picture. It's hard to describe the bloom, but it's kind of like an airy, grassy seed head. Those bloom in, uh, I want to say, kind of early, late July, early August. The, the little blue stem bloom about that same time. Keep in mind that native grasses do come up late. They don't come up as early as some of the other grasses, but when they do, they really come fast and look great. So they look great in the late season time frame. So that's kind of a few of the natives. I just wanted to pan out to show you the whole native section here. We have a big native section. It's the biggest we've had so far. Uh, we have a couple classes coming up too. One is tomorrow on pollinators, please sign up. And then we have a native plants class next weekend too, that last weekend of June. So as you can see, we have a lot of native plants to choose from, so make sure you come down here and choose some. 
you think I covered everything, Melissa? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that was very nice. If you have other questions on natives at all, Derek is our native expert. And just give us a call, email us, send us a message on Facebook. We're happy to try and help with any questions you have and get you going in gardening with natives. All right. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for our next one.